Hey BookTube friends, I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas. I have some very different books to talk about in this video. The first one I want to talk about is The Making of Biblical Womanhood by Beth Allison Barr. And this author is a history professor at Baylor University and her specialty is medieval history, but she is also a Southern Baptist pastor's wife. I think that provides her a very unique perspective to make this argument from because she uses a lot of historical research, obviously, but there are also some personal anecdotes that are thrown in throughout the book. And that made this book very readable, very relatable. And as someone who grew up in a Southern Baptist church, it was very uh, relatable to me. So uh, I really enjoyed this book. I would highly recommend it for anyone who is interested in church history or the topic of women in the church. But essentially the premise of this book is she is taking this idea of biblical womanhood and deconstructing it and really looking at where it came from. Biblical womanhood is essentially the belief that God designed women to be submissive wives and virtuous mothers. And this is a belief that really impacts their roles in the church and it also impacts their relationship dynamics. So I really think it is an important topic and it is one belief that is held by a lot of Protestant evangelical Christians in America. One thing that I was struck by is the change that occurred in the church as a result of the Reformation in regards to women. Because prior to the Reformation, women were actually a bit more vocal and a bit more involved in the church. But it's after the Reformation that we see a bit more of this sort of patriarchal authority coming from the husbands. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you don't have as much authority with the priest and that authority then shifts to the husbands. So I found that historical tidbit very interesting. And something else that she covered that I thought was very intriguing is this idea of tracing the roots of patriarchy. They really trace back to human history. It's not something that we can really pinpoint to the words of Jesus, especially if Jesus is calling for Christians to be different, then I don't really know why they would continue with the same old patriarchal system um, that has pervaded human history. We also dealt with the biblical translations and how that impacted the role of women. And she talked about the apostle Junia and how her gender was essentially changed by many church leaders and Bible translations. And, you know, one thing that has always struck me is the fact that biblical translations and commentary are typically done by theologians, not historians. And I really feel like a historical element and historical context has been missing from some of the biblical text. So, for example, one oft quoted line from Paul is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35 through 36. It says, It is shameful for a woman to speak in church. What? Did the word of God originate with you, or are you the only ones it has reached? And this is one that is often quoted as a way to keep women silent in the church and not allow them to preach or teach, particularly if they are preaching or teaching to men. However, this author really points to the historical background because that is a practice that was instituted by the Romans and there is a historical background to that and why that happened. But essentially Paul is stating that that is the policy and then he is disagreeing with it. So this book really shows a more egalitarian view of Christianity and I really found it just extremely readable and very fascinating. I could relate to this book growing up in a Southern Baptist church and I always had kind of these, these internal feelings about some of the things that I saw in some of these quotes here. The idea of being submissive and even the idea of being a mother, that's just not something that I've ever wanted for myself or wanted for my life and so this whole idea of biblical womanhood just kind of always made me cringe and I just couldn't believe that anything would be divinely ordained if it made me feel that uncomfortable. So it was really nice to feel validated in this book. She really filled in the gaps and she did it in a way that mixed history, theology, and her personal story. 
So I definitely recommend this book. I may actually pick up a physical copy of it. I liked it that much. The second book that I read recently is this one here, The Art of Civilized Conversation, A Guide to Expressing Yourself with Style and Grace by Margaret Shepard with Sharon Hogan. And this book I did read cover to cover, but it probably would be more helpful to read as needed because there are sections of this book related to specific social settings. And so there are sections about what to say if you work in a professional building and you have to ride an elevator frequently, uh, how to mingle and make conversation at a cocktail party, how to comport yourself at a dinner party. This has a lot of very practical advice and it actually gives you sample questions to ask, gives example conversations. It is a very practical guide and it does cover some standard rules of etiquette. So things like listening and not rambling, not gossiping, not being a bore. And it also has a section about disagreeing and how to do that carefully and in a very civilized way. That's one that a lot of people should read. So one part of this book I had to laugh because it talks about not steering a conversation into a dead end. And one of the examples that the author uses is don't go on and on about a book that you alone have read. I have done this for sure. Uh, usually only when I'm with very close friends, but I have definitely done that one. So apologies, my etiquette is not the best. I guess I will work on that. This book even covers how to talk with people who may have visual or hearing impairments and um, also people who may be in the process of learning your language. It included examples of things to talk about with kids and older people, in-laws, the list goes on. I really enjoyed this book, but again, I don't think it's one that you necessarily need to read cover to cover, but you know, the people you meet, if you meet someone who is a button pusher, you know, you might want to read that section. But if you have social anxiety and you're going to a social gathering, this would be a very good book to pick up because you could write down a little cheat sheet. Um, you could have a few pointers from this book that, you know, help get you through those social engagements. There are also some very classy ways in this book to extricate yourself from uncomfortable social situations. So I thought that was pretty helpful. And some of it was a little funny. Um, there was one uh, zinger that I laughed out loud for. So it says, don't tell an 80 year old woman, you look good for someone your age, or you must have been a beautiful woman, unless you want her to think, you must have been a cute baby before you could talk. Instead, ask her about things that maturity makes her good at or that are universal to any age. The last book I want to talk about is a romance, and I never read romance, so this is kind of a departure from my usual thing, but I was looking for something light, something fun, something that I didn't really have to think about because, you know, the art of civilized conversation and the making of biblical womanhood, I'm not going to say they took it out of me, but a little bit you know sometimes you just need something light something fun and so i did it i read the hating game by sally thorne and i'm sure you guys have seen this all over booktube and there is a movie out now so um, i haven't watched it but it is out there this is kind of the classic enemies to lovers sort of story you have these two publishing companies who are very different in their philosophies one is kind of all about the artist you know the writer really about the literature and the other is all about the money and those two companies merge and so we have these two executive assistants who work right across from each other and they hate each other or do they and so we see this romance develop it was a little steamy at times it was very comedic um there was some good tension in it and the comedy was pretty funny. There were quite a few lines that I literally laughed out loud for, but the characters were very immature. Um, their antics at work were very funny, but I just wanted to fire them both myself because they were so unprofessional. Uh, but I did like this book overall. I enjoyed it. Um, I really don't want to say a lot about it as far as critiquing it because 
I don't know. I liked it for what it was. And yeah, the characters were a bit immature, but you know, it, it was a good enemies to lovers sort of romance. So I did enjoy that. But uh, that's all I've read here recently. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. And I may do a couple of tag videos here soon. I don't know. We'll see if I can fit it in. But if I don't, I hope you have a wonderful holiday. And Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you in the next one.